Let's talk about inverse functions and models. All right, so let's talk about inverse functions in general. So here we're going to define what a uh, definition of a one-to-one -one function, a function whose domain is one-to-one -one if, if no two elements have the same image. That is, if, if, if the function value is not a if the two function values are different, it means that they have different inputs, right? So different inputs give different outputs, guaranteed. Um, and so with a one-to-one -one function, so here, this is kind of easy to explain with, we'll just use this. So we'll say this one is one-to-one, -one. we'll just do one dash one as the abbreviated, and then we'll do one that's not one-to-one. -one. All right, so here if I have some, so here's a function that sends one element to one. So we'll say, we'll say one to four, two will go to seven, eight will go to one, and four goes to six. And so each, each input has a unique output. But here, let's pretend I have a function that send one to two. Two to two, oops, and three to three, and then link four to three. Oops, let me send these both to four. That way I can clearly define the function. Of course, I went wrong there. Either way. Oops. And we'll send four. And so at this function here, I'm sending one to two and two to two. And so that means this is not one to one because I have different inputs give the same output. Okay. And in order to show this, what you do is you do what they call a function is one to one if and only if the horizontal line intersects the graph. I was like, what is I even thinking? No more than once. <laughs> God, I'm like, oops, there should be a no in there. That changes everything. A function is, oh, if no, 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 I had the no. Right there, my dyslexia just can't read it. I'm like, if no horizontal line intersects the graph more than once, <laughs> or if a horizontal line intersects the graph no more than once, it's the same. It's right here. I said it right. Okay. This is correct as written, not as read. Okay. And so let me just show you briefly how to do that. So here we have a function of x cubed roughly. And here if I draw, oh, give me, I don't know, I'm just gonna make one color real quick. Never mind, I'm just, I want red. I want red. I want red, I want red. So here's a draw horizontal lines here at intersects once, here it intersects once, and here it intersects once. So all my things on the intersect once. So vertical lines test if it's a function, horizontal line test if that function is not. No, let me rephrase that. Horizontal lines test if a curve is one-to-one. -one. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a function. All right, so let's go back to blue. So notice that like something like x squared just doesn't satisfy it, right? Because when I go back to my red, if I do this. And so here, this function is not one-to-one. -one. So this is not one-to-one. -one. Well, this one is one-to-one, -one, right? And so this function has an inverse. This function does not. And so what do we usually do with something like this? Well, if we have something like this, we just truncate it, right? And so here I'm clearly saying x is clearly, is only greater than zero. So here I have this. And then once I've truncated half of it, it satisfies the vertical. And so here I can create an inverse function. So this is one to one, right? Because here, if I let x squared, if f is equal to x, if f of x is equal to x squared, where x is strictly greater than zero, then f inverse x is equal to the square root of x, right? And notice here, this is perfectly fine because this will allow, um, and if I drew that, let me just draw that in, I don't know, this color. 
and then and then a derivative, and then I don't think I actually wrote this anywhere. The inverse of an inverse is the original function. So the inverse of this function is this function. Okay. And let's just do e to the x just to for completionist sake. E to the x, we just learned how to draw that. And here if we just draw lines, notice it only intersects once. And so there is an inverse to this function. All right, so I'll leave that up for one second. Mm -hmm. And then we'll switch pages. All right, what am I doing? Do, 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 do. All right, so let's go ahead and do this page. All right, so definition of an inverse function. So let's define it. A one to one function. So let f be a one to one function whose domain is a and range is b. Then the inverse function f inverse has a domain of b and range of a. Please, 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 please note that um, this does not equal this for the most part. Are there functions which this is true? Sure. This means inverse, not this. It's kind of like this sign of x means arc sign. Means arc sign, really. Not, not one over sign. One over sign is, of course, cosecant. Right? Um, and so just be careful. That's just the notation we use. Um, why did you pop out of my box? Go back. Go back in the box. And so here, so if so f of x gave me y, the inverse function of y gives me x for any x and y and b, right? And so, or for any y and b and x and a. And so, and so it's it's kind of like it's a I always say it's like a good librarian, right? No matter what 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 people take off the books. In what order, the librarian's going to figure out where the book originally came from and put it right back where it came from every time. And so here, let me just do a quick arrow diagram. So here, if I have, if I send one, a two, and three, let's go ahead and do that and put them in the box. If I send one, two, and three to, oh, I don't know, let's send one to four, just for kicks. We'll send two to three, and then we'll send three to two. So if this is my function f, f inverse would just do the exact opposite, right? And just take four, and it would send it back to one. So it'll take two, and it'll send that, well, two, we'll send it back to three, and then I'll take three, and then send that And so whatever it went to, it's just going to put it right back. And in these case, two went to three. So three goes to two, and then uh, three went to two, so two goes to three. Okay. The inverse property is the one that's saying, you know, if this is a one-to-one -one function, the inverse sa it satisfies what they call cancellation properties. And so if I take the inverse of a function of x, I get x for all x and a. And then here, if I took the inverse of x, f inverse, and then applied the function to it, I get x back. And so this does that. The only reason these are different depends on the domain, right? So sometimes it, it, if the domain has, if it's in both the domain and range, you don't worry about it. If it's only in the domain and the range, you do have to worry about it. So with all this said and done, we notice that this is one to one. So therefore it has an inverse function. So we just define it as such, right? We just define a log is literally defined just to be the inverse of this. That a to the y is equal to x means log base a, and we say log base a of x is equal to y. And we'll do some manipulation of this in a second. So 
But how do you show a function is an inverse of each other? So let's just do this. So let's, you just literally take f inverse of f of x, and you crunch through and see what happens. And so one way to check your work, and this is the only reason I put this here. So f of x is equal to x cubed. So I have x cubed equal to f inverse x. Well, if I take the cubic root, because that's one, or no, nope, I haven't written this way. So let's do it that way. X to the cube, the one third power. Now, according to my power rules, I can rewrite this as X to the three over three, which is still the same as X to the one, which is just equal to X. So to check if it's an inverse, this is usually what you do. Show us an inverse of each other. You just put one into the other, right? You either do, either do this or do this. Okay. All right, so let's start messing with it a little bit. In fact, uh, in example three, did you mean to write? Oh, I wrote f prime instead of f inverse. Thank you. Put a little negative sign there. Thanks. All right, so that's a lot of preamble. I actually might get to page four today, which would be good. All right, so let's do the next page. All right, so let's find functions of things which are not exponential, and then we'll do, and then we'll do a whole. The rest of this we'll be dealing with logs and stuff. So let's do some non-log stuff for a second. All right, so here's some steps: how to find an inverse. Your book doesn't really go through this in a nice, super clear order, as far as I remember. It just oh, it does. It says do this, do this, do this. Yeah, it's not bad. Um. I always do it a different, slightly different way. So this is the, it's just one more step than what your book has, but let, let me explain what to do. Let's just label these as one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, and so here, so here we're just gonna write y, everywhere we see a function, we're just write y equals x minus three. So here we just, the first step is just plug in a y. Right. Then we're gonna switch is we're gonna switch our x and y. So, so here everywhere I see a y, I'm gonna put an x, and everywhere you see an x, you're gonna put a y. And then you're gonna solve for y in terms of x, if possible. It's not always possible, but it sometimes is. And so here we're gonna move over the three and divide out by the four, and that equals to y. And then here we're gonna say y is equal to the inverse function. So y inverse of x is equal to x minus three over four. I woke up the dogs. Let me, let me open the door so the dogs can go out. Okay. So go ahead and try to do C for me and I'll do B and D with you. So go ahead and try C. Come on, you two. Come on. Oh, you're right. That's one hundred percent. Should be x plus three. Thank you. I sneezed and then my brain died. All right, so let's do C real quick. So C, we're going to write y equals to x cubed minus two over six. We're going to switch everywhere we see a y and an x. So we do x equals y cubed minus two over six. We'll move over the six. So it'll be six x minus or no plus two equals y cubed. And then we'll just take the cubic root. So it'll be y equals the cubic root of six x plus two. And then the last step is we write f inverse of x is equal to cubic root of 6x plus 2. All right. And so that's 
is kind of what you do. For these ones, we do the same. Um, yeah, I think we'll have just enough time to finish this. Um, yeah, so let's just do this. So here we have y equals to 2x plus 3 over y I'll skip steps, y minus 1. So that's my first thing. Second thing is to swap my x's and y's. So this would be x equals 2y plus 3 over y. Um, I don't even need here because I'm going to need the space. <laughs> minus 1. All right, then I'm going to multiply across. I'll have y minus 1. x equals 2x or 2y plus 3. Get my x's and y's on the same side. So it'd be uh, so go ahead and distribute that. So it'd be x y minus x minus two y plus three. Move stuff over. So it'd be x y minus two y equals x plus three. Pull out a y. So this would be x minus two. Um, equals x plus 3, and then divide it out, and I'll have y equals x plus 3 over x minus 2. And let me just write the inverse here. So x is equal to x plus 3, x minus 2. So that's how. So here I'm starting process 3, and then once I got that finished, so this is still 3, I do step 4, which is just right. And remember the steps are uh, everywhere. Just write a y, interchange it just because it makes life easier, solve for y, and then replace your y with the inverse of x. Let's do this one more time. So here we'll have y equals to x plus 4 over minus 3x minus 5. Then we'll, so that's step one. Step two is switch out the x's and y. So this equals to y plus Four over minus three y minus five, and then here we just solve across. So it'll be minus three y minus five times x equals y plus four minus three y x. Um, I'll go ahead and move it over. So minus y, and then it's be. 5x on this side plus the 4. And then here we pull out the y. So the y equals minus 3x minus 1 is 5x plus 4. And y equals 5x plus 4 over negative 3x minus 1. And then we just do this. So that's how you do these. These are a little bit more complicated, so I forgot to show you at least two examples. You'll have one or two to do for your homework. All right, and so notice, and I want to, we'll just end on this note, is that this drawn example of a reflection. So here, if I have this x equals y line, this graph, um, no matter what I do here, so if I have some function here, right, this function will be a mirror image of that. So if this was f of x, this would be f of inverse of x. And this can happen all over the place. And let me just show you a couple real quick on this one, and we'll call it a day. So, boop. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so let me just draw in. X. So we have this line. So we'll have x cubed, and then we'll have x to the one third power. Whoops, I don't know where I want. Can you go back up, please? Oh, I can go back. I'll go back up in the end. I'll go back up at the end. So let me just show you this real quick, and then we'll call it a day. So let's look. I, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. 
radius to be one divided by three pi. All right, so let's look at, let me zoom on in so it's a little bit clear. All right, so why is that? So let's look at this. So here, these two are inverses of each other and just for fun, let me see if I can draw it in a different color. Give me a different color, there we go. So this purple line, the x equals x. So notice here that this is x cubed as it comes up, goes through and goes to that. And this is the cubic root of x. So it comes in, goes through and goes to that. So this is the cubic root. This is the, this root, uh, this is the cubed and this is the cubic root. And notice that this is a complete reflection of that. And that's gonna be true for any graph, okay? Well, that's, all right. So let's just get started. So let's start here. So we're gonna talk about laws of logarithms. And so here are some common uh, log logarithmic laws that just kind of help you work through things. So we went through all the exponential rules. And so here's some log rules that just help you to solve things. So here we're gonna say A strictly greater than zero. We're not gonna deal with uh, log base A less than that. And log, log of one is, is not interesting. So we just don't deal with that one either. And so we have um, also let A, B, and B a, B, and C are just real numbers. And we're also going to uh, force A and B to be greater than zero for particular reasons, um, but that's fine. So here, if I have a log of something times something, so here, if I have the log of two things multiplied by each other, that's the same thing as taking the log of log base A of capital A plus log base B of capital B. And this comes, and it slightly comes from the fact that here, if I have e to the, let's say I have e to the, or a to the b times a to the c, that equals a to the, no, that's not where that one comes from. I'm trying to remember how to that one. Oh, no, that's right. a to the c is equal to a to the b plus c. And so since the log is the inverse, so here if I'm multiplying these two and it turns into addition, that's kind of where it comes from. It's a little hand wavy. It's more, it's actually a lot more nuanced than that. Um, my eraser did. And so here, that's just one of the rules. If I have a divided by b, it's a log base a of b and minus log base b of b. This, do you really need to memorize this one? Not really, because here I could write this. I could also write this as log base a of a to the b minus, right? To the minus one. And I guess I need to teach you the other. So here, if I have log base a to a to a c, or log base a of capital A to capital C, I can pull out exponents and they become multiples. So exponents become multiples for logs. Multiplication becomes addition. Division becomes subtraction. But notice this, the reason this comes about because here, if I move this up, it'd be A times, let me write this so it's clear. Log of A, B. Oh, I was like, why is it awful? Smoothing. All of a sudden, the handwriting should get better. Keyword should, <laughs> right? Um, log base A. So this is the same as that. And then here, notice here, it'd be log of A times B, and then you pull out the negative one. And so it ends up being the same. So here, I want to use, use my log rules to do stuff to evaluate these things. So let's go ahead and do this. So here I have log base four and log base two of eight. And so this is the same as the log of two of six. Let me not skip steps, four times eight. Four times eight is the log of log base two of 32. Oops, my internet connection is unstable. If my internet's really junky, um, so if my internet gets really bad, because I've had internet stability issues from time to time, if it gets really bad, I'll just videotape it and post it. But it, I think it's doing okay right now. 
So here, log base uh, 232. Um, did we? I don't know if I taught you. I don't. <laughs> I legit don't remember what we did. Did I teach you how to expand and contract logs? Oh yeah, here we did. And I taught you. Okay, so here. You know, I don't think I did this. Did that with you. It's a good practice, but here log base the thirty-two. So this asked the question. Let me let me just do it here. This asked the question thirty. It asked the question two to what power is x, right? Two to what power is 32? Well, it's two to the fifth power, right? Um, um, so this would be to the fifth power. And so that's how you solve a log by in your head. Did you ask what to what power equals that? Well, two to what power is eight? Well, that doesn't make any sense. But here, if we use our little log rules, log of two of here, I'm going to use this rule. So I'll have 80 over two or 80 over five. Whoops, hi, not what I wanted. Gives me log base two of 80 divided by. I can do this. <laughs> 16, which is, of course, 4. Okay. And then here, I can put this on the log of base 2, 8 to the negative 1 third power. So this is the same thing as the log base 2 of 1 over the, the cubic root of 8. Well, what's 1 over the cubic root of 8? Well, that's equal to log base 2 of cubic root of 8 is 2, so we have a half, and that's equal to minus 1. And again, how do you solve a log? Here I'll have 2 to what power is equal to half, and here that's negative 1. Okay? The lag is nasty. Is it? Is it, guys? Um, we have two options for this. Um, it's fine for me. Okay. Um, if it's really, really bad, let me see if I can't. Hmm. I hear every other word. Uh, let's see if I can fix Let me see if I can fix this. Um, uh, stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Let me turn off my video so it's not even trying to do that. Let me turn off my video, see if that doesn't work. If it, that doesn't work, um, I might reset the system and then we'll just convene class again in five minutes. <laughs> okay, so let me know. Seems okay now. All right, we'll see how it works. If it's really bad, I'll, I'll go around and do stuff. All right, so let's do this. So, so expand. So here we just want to expand the following. So here, within some log rules, I'm going to just have, we're going to contract and expand things, just get used to it. Because you're going to need these skills in order to solve log equations. So if I wanted to expand this, it would be log of, so everything on, uh, everything on top will be positive, everything on bottom is negative. And it's just a quick and easy way to do this. So we log base 5 of 6 plus log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of y. Here we'll have ln of x cubed plus ln of y squared. And then we can pull out the exponent. So I'll have 3 ln x plus 2 ln y. And here we can go ahead and split this. And so everything on top is positive. And since this is on bottom, so it'd be minus ln of square root of y. Um, what's the answer for c? c? The answer to c is minus 1.
as these. And so here, oops, I forgot my LN on it. So here, uh, so even though it's A divided by B equals this, you can safely just write if it's on the top of a fraction, you can write, write it up here. If it's on the bottom, you can just make it negative. Okay. And then here we can pull out the exponents. And so these are just, the exponent here would be a half. And then the exponent here would be, of course, And so the ability to expand and contract, so here we're going to combine the following. So here I'm going to put in all my exponents, so be y to the fourth minus ln of x cubed plus ln of z, and then I guess I should have left myself a little bit more room, ln. So this is on top, top this is on top, this is on bottom, so it'd be the ln of y to the fourth z over x cubed. Here, we'll do the same thing here. We'll go ahead and put this on top. Um, and so we'll do that. So we'll have log base 7. And I'm going to just do it all at once real quick. So this goes on top, so it'll be x plus 1 squared. This goes on the bottom, so I'll have x plus 1. This goes on top, so I'll have x plus 3 cubed. And then if I wanted to simplify that a little bit, this actually cancels with this. In fact, you could have actually just canceled it here if you wanted to. Either that would have worked, and you would have gotten the same thing of log base 7 of x plus 1 times x plus 3 cubed. So ln means natural log. So yes, 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 yes. Um, so ln means log base e. And I'm pretty sure your book, get your book. book. Pretty sure your book's one of the nice ones which makes that. Um, book, oh, book, oh, book, oh. Yes, then. This inverse of inverses, inverse theorem, log. Laws of logs. Yeah, natural log in your book is ln of e. It's always ln of e, but I'd want to know. Your book doesn't define it. As far as I can see, your book does not define. Oh, your book is very nice. So your book is super nice that your log base 10 is 10. So let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. So ln means log base C, right? ln means log base C. And so and then in some books, log of x can mean, it can mean actually two things. Log of x could, in some books can mean either log base 10 of x, or it could mean log base e of x. I've seen it for both. Your book is actually very nice. It never has log base nothing, okay? Um, <laughs> so it just destroys the ambiguity, ambiguity of it. I know it's log nothing to be log base 10, Ellen is always log base e, though. OK. Um, could you explain uh, b for 9 again? Oh, so yeah. So here, here I have positive, negative, and positive. And, and so I put the 2 up front, because this 2 becomes an exponent, so it would be x plus 1 squared. This is on the bottom, since it's a negative up front, so for the division, so it would be x minus or x plus 1. But if I have it on top and bottom, I can cross it off. Right? Or here, if I have log of something, uh, since this and this match exactly, I can just do the same thing if this was 2x minus x, right? Doesn't matter, right? I can just simplify this to be x. And so you can, either way, you'll get this answer. And then this is positive, so it's on top of 3. Uh, so the of uh, x plus 3. And since here, exponents become multiplication or multiplication becomes exponents. 
That's how it goes. And so this is all log based. Seven, even though when I pick up my pen, it makes a, it still registers as I lift up. So it's all log base seven. Yeah. Okay. And so this is all log base seven. Um, so yeah, so for your book, your book, um, ln of x is equal to log base e of x. This is true for no matter what. All books, everyone uses this. Your book, fortunately, very fortunately, never does the ambiguous case where it just says log of nothing. I've seen books where it means log base e. I've seen books where it means log base 10. Just something to be aware of when you're doing stuff with logs. All right, um, change your base formula. So this is use the type stuff in the calculator. So if you have log base b of x, because if you look on most, 90% of calculators have two functions. Um, they'll have ln of x and they'll have log of x. And you know, most of the time, this is log base 10. But if I hear if I wanted to find log base 7 of, of let's just do 49, something I can do in my head, right? That is equal to 2, right? But in order to do this in a calculator, you can type this in a calculator because most of them only have these two. You usually just type in log base. In this case, it'd be log base ln of 49 over ln of 7. And then this will pop out 2, 3. Um, to type it into Wolfram Alpha, you just put the underscore and it works. Okay. Um, you just put the underscore and then it works. And once again, remember how to solve logs kind of in your head. Remember this, that log base A of X is equal to y is equal to log of y equal to x. And so when you're solving when you're solving this, I think of 2 to what power, because I want to figure out what this is, 2 to what power is equal to x. That's just kind of how you think through it in your head. OK. All right, so let's go to the next one. In the example, well, Oh, yeah, no, I'm choosing. So here I have log base A. It doesn't matter what A it is, right? Um, and so I'm just choosing LN because LN's the fastest to type in, okay? So you can choose A. Technically, I could write log base 52 over of X over log base 52 of B. You could do that. It's just not useful. <laughs> um, let, me, let me show you something real quick. So let me find it. Because before we had calculators, does anyone know how we solve logs? Before calculators before a few, of, a couple of you used times, right? Not everyone, but a couple of you. Uh, it was before my time. Um, but what do you used to have to do is it used to be what they call a log book. And you just kind of, they had these fat books that were nothing more than logs, right? And you just looked them up. And it just was these huge sheets and you had to kind of go along, figure it out, write that out. It was a uh, terrible. <laughs> uh, so, Remember, calculator used to be a profession, right? <laughs> it used to be something people did, right? Uh, it wasn't an object. It was a profession. You were calculators. Um, where is it? Oh, there's this really cool uh, movie, was it? Not that long ago. Where is the NASA people where they had... Um, I didn't watch it, but I should have. It was, it was about the people behind the scenes who did all the yeah, hidden figures. That's it. Um, yeah, they just did calculations all day. <laughs> and, you know, 
it's a rough life. Do it. All right, so let's teach you how to solve um, exponential equations. Um, so we're going to solve exponential equations. Use it, I'll solve one, then I have you guys solve one, I'll just solve them all. Because we still have another section to teach. All right, so guys, we're solving the exponential equation. So you isolate the exponential equation to one side and you take the logarithm to remove the exponent and then solve for a given variable. And so in order to do this, so let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to solve and round to two decimal places. In fact, let me have my cheat sheet up so I don't have to type it all in. Cheat sheet. I should probably show you how to type in one, though. Hold on one second. I'm really sorry about those guys. This one? Yeah, no. This one. All right, so let's just go on through. So here, so we're going to isolate the exponential to one side of the equation. So here we're solving exponential equation. So here I have e to the x to the third power equals to 15. So I want to isolate this to one side of the equation. So here, I'm going to take e. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this in. So this becomes 3x equals 15. All right, so once you have something raised to something here, go ahead and just solve it out. And so to solve it out, we're going to, uh, so once we have a base raised to something equals whatever, right? It doesn't matter what this is. You can then take the logarithm. So taking logs of both sides is a valid function. So here I can take ln of e to the 3x equals ln to the 15. So if I, by taking the log to both sides, I haven't changed anything. And so this is a new valid operation you can use when you're solving for equations. Now that I've done this, ln of e raised to anything, since these are inverses, is just going to produce what's up top. And then ln of 15. And then here I just divide out the 3, so I get ln of 15. Oops. And there's your answer. Now, if it's a little bit more complicated and you don't have the same base, so notice here I have a different base on this side and a different base on this side, you can still solve it. So you can't get the expression on one side of it, but you can just take, you can still take the log of both sides. If I'm taking a random log to both sides, I'm always going to take ln just because it's the least amount of characters to write. That's the only reason I take it. So if I do that, I'm going to have ln of 7 to the 2x plus or equals ln of 3 to the x plus 2. So here I have ln of 7 to the 2x. Now, by my log rules, I can take whatever the exponent is and put it out front. This is just one of the rules of logs, which allows me to solve these things. Oops, plus 2 equals ln of 3. All right, from here, you just go ahead and solve for x. And I know ln of 7 looks like something weird, but it's just a number, right? It's just some number. Um, in fact, the number is such a shot. It's just some number. So ln of 7 equals this, right? And I can say more digits, right? You know, it goes on and on and on. I can say even more digits, right? Because I just wonder how many digits this thing will feed me. OK. It's just whatever that number is. <laughs> 1.9 some, 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 right? 
no reason to be ridiculous, but it's just a number, right? And so, same thing with Valana 3, it's just a number. And so just treat it like a number, right? This is that number, right? It's just some number, right? Um, notice here that your Wolfram Alpha thinks log base nothing is log base E, okay? So that's something to know for Wolfram Alpha. Log of nothing is log base E. So this is some number, this is some number. So how would I solve this if I, before is I could move all the x's to one side. So here I have two ln of seven, because this is just a number, because ln of seven is a number. So two ln of seven is x. And then here I'll go ahead and distribute that across. So I'll have ln of three, x, oops. Yeah, that's fine. Plus two ln of three, move all the x's to one side. So I have two ln, of seven x minus ln of three x equals two ln of three. Divide out the x, so I have x equals two ln of seven minus ln of three equals two ln three. And then here we'll just divide it out. And so I have x is equal to two ln of three over to ln of seven minus ln of three. So in order to solve these, you just kind of, so if it's of a different base, just take natural log of both sides. Then you can pop out your exponents, which have your variable in it. And then you can just solve for it. Just remember that this is just a number and go for it. All right. All right, so let's do the next one. So let's solve the following. So to solve for logarithmic equations, you're going to solve put the log on one side or the other, and then you're going to take the exponent. You can exponentiate. This is another valid operation, and then you just solve for the given variable. But now you have to check the domain because not all answers will work, because not all answers are in the domain of log. Remember the domain of log. Log's domain is from from zero, not including zero, to infinity. And it doesn't log base A, it could be whatever. It's always from zero to infinity. Um, so that's the domain. And so we have to check that all our answers or everything we plug into a log is between zero and infinity. And it'll make sense as we do it, hopefully. All right, well, let's do this one. So here, I want to get this to a single log. So here I have something plus something. So here I can write this as log x plus two times x minus one. And so here, I'm using the fact that this is addition. I can put it together as multiplication equals to one. And then here, I have log base nothing. I'm going to be clear and write 10, because that's what your book will do. Um, so I'll have log base 10 for the rest of this. And so here, this is log base 10. If I want to clear out the log, I'm going to exponentiate both sides to the power of 10. So here I'll have 10 of log base, 10 of x plus 2, x minus 1. And then that'll be equal to 10 to the 1. So here I've just taken this. I've taken 10 and I've raised it to this power. And I've taken 10 and raised it to this power. And that's a valid thing to do. It might be new for you guys, but it is valid. Um, because if this equals this, 10 to that power is going to equal 10 to that power. Now, notice here that 10 and logs, these are inverses of each other. So all I get out here is x plus 2, x minus 1. Here, 10 to the first power is just 10. In order to solve this, we go ahead and uh, foil this. So it gives me x squared plus x plus minus 2, yeah, equals to 10. And notice, please, please, because some of you might be sore tempted at this point. It's like, oh, that means either x plus 2 is 10 or x minus 1 is 10. It's like, no, it's a zero multiplication rule. That means if, if two things multiply together is equal to zero, that means one of them is zero. If two things are multiplied by each other and equals 10, doesn't mean either was 10, right? So you have to make it a zero on this side. It's the most common mistake I see for my students. So here, just move the 10 over. Then you refactor the thing. So let's go ahead and refactor it. 
Um, that'd be x plus four in this case, and x minus three is equal to zero. So that means either x is equal to minus four or x is equal to three. But notice we need to check the domain. We have to, have to, have to, have to do this step, <laughs> okay? If I plug in negative four, and then you take it and you plug it all the way back into the original. If x is negative four, this is going to give me log of negative two. What well, can I do that? No, log has to be between zero and infinity. So this is not in the domain. And so you have to throw it away. So the only answer here is x equals to three. Do the same thing here. We're going to try to get the log by itself. And so here I'm going to minus over the three. So I'll have two log of four x minus three equals eight divide by the two. So I have log base four of x minus three equals that does not equal eight. Hold on. Oh, no, it does. And this equals four. Then we're going to raise both sides to the power of four. So here I'm just going to do, I usually don't write an extra step. I usually just put a four here and four here and say that is exponential to that. So this just gives me x minus three equals four to the fourth power. It means x minus three equals 256. So that means x equals 259. Okay. Well, 259, if we check it, well, 259 is going to make this positive, so you're okay. All right, any questions on any of these? All right, I'll leave that up for a second. All right. Uh, yes, I divided the, oh, yeah, I did divide the eight by the, I took the eight and divided by the two to get the four, and then I raised them to the fourth power, yes. So eight, so here I divided out the two, which gave me the four. And then here, instead of writing this as a separate step, I almost always just for shorthand, just put a four and a four, okay? Because I'm gonna show you the long way one time and then I'll try to show you some of the more shorthand way to do it the next time. Um, that way you can see both. All right, so let's go ahead and just do the last set of notes because we still have one more set to do. All right, so let's talk about some log. Uh, Let's talk about some limits. All right, so put this over here, put this over here. Hi, maybe. I need a bigger desk. Nope, don't zoom in, no. Right. Up we go. All right, so if a function is one to one differentiable and, the in, and with an inverse function, we can find f prime of inverse and f prime inverse of a, this should mean does not equal zero. Sorry, that should have a does not equal. As long as this it doesn't equal zero, then the inverse can be an inverse function. You can find the inverse function by doing the following. And so here, if I want f inverse, hip inverse, Prime, so the derivative of the inverse of, fun of the function f at a is found by one over f, the derivative, and we're gonna plug in the inverse function. So it'd be one over, it's one over the composition of the derivative of the inverse function. It's kind of, it's hard to, it's all monkey. So let me kind of just show you this. So let's, this be f, right? And I want to find f inverse of one. 
Okay. So let's do this step by step. So let's. All right, so what is f? So what do we need here in order to do this? We need to find f prime, right? And we need to find what f inverse of a is. And a in this case is one. So these are the two things we need in order to use this theorem. I need to know what f prime is. I need to know what the function f prime is. And I'd only need to know the value, the inverse value for one. And so how would I find the inverse value for one? Well, here, if I want to know, if I plug one into, see if I can make this super clear. I don't want to just write it out. And, so f, f of, f inverse of one equals to y, that means f of y is equal to one, right? Does anyone understand this from the inverse? See where I get this logic? So I want to figure out what y is, right? And so I solve this. And so here I'm just going to say 2x plus cosine x is equal to one. Well, that means x is equal to And here you can just do by inspection. If I plug in zero, I get nothing here and one here. So X is equal to one. Oh no, X was equal to zero, sorry. So here we have X is equal to zero. So the inverse function of Y of one is equal to zero. Okay, so the inverse value of one is zero because when I plug in zero into this, I get one. And so the inverse value of one will be zero. That's what it means to get inverse. Um, hold on, make sure. Uh, do both. Yeah, so you can you can just raise um, both sides by the same base. It doesn't matter. That's your question. All right, so here, I figured out what this is. So that's the first part of what I need. So I need to figure out what y inverse of one was. Okay, now I just need to figure out the derivative of this function. Well, the derivative of this function, you can just calculate. So it'd be two plus uh, cosine goes to, cosine goes to minus sine, right? So we minus, sorry, sine of x. So the inverse or the derivative of, of our functions is, then we can put it all together. So f, inverse derivative at one is equal to one over our function value. So f in uh, f f prime, and I'm gonna plug in f inverse of a, f inverse of a, or in this case of one is zero. And so here we'll just plug in that value. One over f of zero, so this would be two minus sine of zero. Well, sine of zero is zero. So this is just equal to a half, okay? And so this is derivative of an inverse. So if you have a derivative function and you don't know what that inverse function is, like you don't know what the inverse of this is, that one's a little harder to solve for, right? Um, so here's something we can't take an inverse easily, but I can figure out for one value, I can figure out, I can just solve for x and get what the inverse for one value was. And then here, if I take its derivative of the actual function, not the inverse of that function, I can use that to calculate the inverse of that. It's just one of those kind of niche, niche tricks that we teach you when you do a couple problems on. Um, so let's do some limits. So here's just um, some limits for logs. So logs as, so if we look at the graph of the logarithmic function, here as I, as I get to zero positive, the function here gets, um, 
as x gets closer and closer to zero, this gets closer and closer to minus infinity. As x goes to infinity, it goes to infinity. I mean, it's increasing at a very, very slow rate, but it's still increasing. It's always increasing, so it'll eventually get to infinity. And so here are the two things we're going to use. And so here we're going to use this to solve this mess. So let's go ahead and solve this. So here, we're going to take the limit as x goes to 0 of tangent of x. So log base 10 of tan of x. And to do that, in order to do that, we are going to put um, I had a cheat sheet and then I lost it. That's fine. We'll just do it. So here we're going to do, we're going to stuff this into here. And notice here that we don't need uh, zero positive because this will, if I square something, it's guaranteed to be positive. But what is tangent of zero? Can I just plug that in? Is f prime, yeah, f prime, hold on. Yeah, f prime is two minus sine of x. Uh-huh, that's what f prime is. So can we plug that in? Do I remember what tangent of zero is? Tangent of zero should oh, be. Professor? Yeah? Um, I was wondering if that was a y. Is that, does that say f prime y? No, that's f prime. Yeah, if it, if it, it looks like a y. It is x, this, and then when I did that, it just, my x looked okay. like, it went like that, and so it looked like y. Sorry about that. No, that's f prime of x is equal to this. Okay. So it's tangent of zero. Tangent of zero is sine over cosine. So I think tangent of zero is zero, isn't it? That's like crazy. Yeah, it's zero. So, mm -hmm. oops, back, back. All right, so here tangent of zero is zero. So, but it's also, but it, it's so tangent of squared of zero. So zero times zero is still zero. Right. But notice this is not only zero, but it's zero, but it, but it's x goes to zero. But if x is not zero, right, because it's not close to zero, this is positive. The zero ends up being positive. So this ends up being the log base 10 of, see, I think I can write the notation better. Hold on, let me see if the book does the notation better. I know how to solve it magically well, but I want to make sure I use good notation, which I don't think I am right now. Oh, that's what your book does. It does replacement theory. Check. <laughs> so the way your book shows this and which is makes it look a lot easier. I'm going to say tangent as t goes to t plus of log base 10 of t. And notice, and the reason I do that is because here the, the limit as x goes to 0 of tangent of x, or tangent of, hold on, let me leave these two here and let me put it down below. So the limit, so if I put this limit on the inside, right, as x goes to 0 of tangent squared 0, I'm going to say that's equal to t. And then t then now is going to go to 0 plus, right? Because it's I'm not actually putting in 0, but it doesn't matter. I'm always going to square it. And so here I'm swapping, I'm swapping my variable. And so this becomes log base 10 of this to zero plus, which then I can safely write as minus infinity. 
So in order to do this, I look on the inside. I take the limit as that goes on the inside. Notice here I can just plug it in directly. But since this is squared, I can safely say this is zero plus. And once I say, and then I'm just going to, then I take the log of t. Or you could write it as the limit inside. This is zero plus, and then you get minus infinity. I just want to make sure, want to make sure um, I teach you good notation, because my notation sometimes for limits isn't always the best. I kind of blunt force trauma from time to time. Okay, and that's the end of these notes.